Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about Chanel and Chanel sunglasses are the word du jour. So um, this is the product. Actually, I'm going to put on this glove um, because you have seen me wear them in my climbing to the top of the mountain video. But now that they're back uh, home with me, they are archived properly in their tissue paper and will be used for further photo shoots or video shoots, but for now, this is how I store them. This is um, Chanel wrapping paper. It should be, you know, acid free, so that's very important if you're archiving anything. These sunglasses are one of the most famous or infamous Chanel sunglasses from the um, Fall-Winter 1992 collection. And <laughs> there's so much paper around them. Before we get to them, there you go. And uh, they hit the runway. Uh, the Prêt-à-Porter 1992, Fall-Winter 1992. Um, they exist in several shapes and forms, four altogether. And there's still a hole here. Um, the, the shapes that exist are chain in the front. This is, by the way, leather intertwined in gold-plated metal. So you could have them with a gold chain on the side instead of the double C and the gold chain on the front. Or, as seen here, the gold chain on the front and then hanging down as a necklace. So actually, if we turn them like this, no. Turn them like this, you could see the length. And then there was a slight variation, which is pretty rare to find. The chain in the front, double C's on the side, no chain on the side. And the fourth, the most rare of all, is, or should be, the double C on the side and the front are two framed chains. Like, the, the chains with the leather are actually used to frame the the shades. So those are the four in existence, officially. Um, this one being the most used by, you could say, stars or musicians out there. These are the ones that have been kind of most worn. Um, and they are, because of that reason, one of the most pricey uh, of the four. However, they are not the most rare. So it's a bit weird, you know, to have uh, this sort of uh, model sought after for so much money, uh, being that it's not as rare as the as its sisters or brothers, if you wish to call them that way. This one is in very good condition. I mean, you have to be aware that this is from 1992. So uh, it, need, it has to have some wear and tear. This one, however, shows a minimum amount of wear, which to me is uh, uh, orgasmic in a way. To a collector, this is great news. Um, let me try to show you. There you have the model number and the color code. On the other side, we have the Chanel logo, copyright, registered trademark, and the European stamp of whatever compliances. You know, uh, these sunglasses remind me of special times, um, the 90s. And the 90s were an incredible time for, well, as far as design is concerned and fashion is concerned, one of the most whimsical and daring pieces were produced back then. Nowadays, almost nobody dares so much. Now, I'm going to put them down for a second, take the glove off, and show you something that is very relevant when we talk about uh, the Chanel 1992 Fall Winter chain sunglasses. Absolutely fabulous, or ab fab. For those of you who don't know Ab Fab, check it out. It's a great TV series. Um, started in the 90s, early, early 90s. I think they started shooting in like 89 even, and or well, maybe, well anyway, early 90s. Um, six seasons uh, out, you know, it, it's a British comedy, so usually they would have only six, se six episodes per season, and then they would go on for three years, and then they would stop for four years, and they would go again for one year. So the six seasons are not six years in a row, but are indeed cover a spectrum of over 20 years. 
Um, this book is one of my favorite, favorite, if you want, 90s fashion books. Uh, why fashion, even though this is not directly a book about fashion? It's called Continuity by Jennifer Saunders. Jennifer Saunders played um, Edwina Monsoon, and her best friend Patsy was Joanna Lumley. Abfab is coming back to theaters, so um, they're not going to shoot another series as of now, but they are shooting a movie, which makes me extremely happy and thrilled because I can't wait to see it. I love them. Um, in, the, in, the, in season two, when uh, Eddie and Patsy, here you have them again, um, decide to take the Concorde and fly over to New York just for a day, uh, Eddie um, is wearing these sunglasses in the entire episode. And I mean, she's really abusing them. They're floating around, she's drunk, and I mean, both of them are totally wasted in trash. Patsy's also a drug addict. So there's a lot of things happening. Eddie owns a public relations company, so she's all about the now and the here and, and the, the top of the world. She has to be, she has to wear everything that's the best, that's considered the best at the moment, no matter how ridiculous and funny it looks on her. <laughs> These glasses were one of those examples, as well as her infamous um, Christian Lacroix necklaces, especially the cross and the heart-shaped ones. So there's a lot of references that... Um, are combined to these sunglasses. These are considered one of Chanel's most famous uh, sunglasses. And it's interesting to see that um, Lagerfeld is not bringing them out again, like, you know, some sort of re-edition or, um, I don't know, just something to, to kind of... I was thinking maybe in 2002, they might have made like a 20 year uh, a 10 year, maybe 2000, I don't know. I know 2012 could have been like a 20 year re-release or something like that, but it didn't happen, which is fine. I mean, Luxottica took over the production of Chanel sunglasses in 1999. So I guess maybe they don't even have the rights to produce these. I don't know how, the, how it works. Um, what is very interesting, however, is that, as I said before, these are one of the most infamous, famous Chanel sunglasses to date. Uh, Show you quickly also the package. They come in this car carton cardboard box with glossy Chanel foil or paper covering it. There you have it. When you open it, the inside, well, here there's some tissue paper which you can take out. But the box is very plain. So these shades came in this type of box. Back in the day, there was no coding system to identify, uh, you know, every single pair of Chanel sunglasses. The coding systems uh, with a particular identification code marked either in the temples or in the frame, in the lens of the sunglasses uh, was introduced with Luxottica's uh, beginning of production of Chanel sunglasses in 1999 or maybe, well, maybe 2000, right after they took over. Uh, so you know, the, the first editions of Chanel sunglasses dating 1989 all the way to 1999 do not bear these uh, codes and these uh, numbers to identify their authenticity. You have to have a very trained eye to be able to understand what is fake, what is not. But you can see it in this case, um, there, there's almost no such thing as a fake. I mean, they're very heavy. You have to know in the back where the screws are positioned and they're not positioned symmetrically. So that, that's a big help, but you got to know how that works. You got to know how the stamping works. You, the heft, you know, this is a Chanel chain. So it's like the quality of a chain that they would use for their bags. It's very, very heavy and durable, as is the leather on the inside. This leather is done so well that I could not find... Um, the part where the two bits of leather unite, where, where it's cut and then I, I just can't find it. As, as much as I try to look for it, I just cannot find the bit of leather that's been um, cut and it's as if it's just one, I mean, I know it's impossible, but it's just one round uh, piece of leather. Very durable, very, very thick. Uh, it even still smells like leather, so I don't know if you could see if we move in pretty close to it, very hard to see, right? The thickness of it. And um, in my personal opinion, I know that some singers out there, I'm not going to mention any names, singers that I do not appreciate and like, so just avoid mentioning them, wore 
the round Chanel sunglasses with Chanel Paris, Paris Chanel written on him, uh, which made the prices just blast uh, over the top. It's not worth it, people. Do not spend thousands of dollars on these glasses. Wait till the craze is over and then get them cheaper because it's not worth it. These are simple acetates. I mean, these are complicated to make. I get it. But still, they haven't reached, as of now, the price requests for the, the round ones. Now, a pair of sunglasses I'm going to show you, um, which you've already seen in my review of the Cyber and Sun Cyber Chanel sunglasses. Check that out in the card section up above. This is another, to me, staple of whimsical Chanel pieces. I'm going to show it to you again, even though we've seen it in the review. Uh, this is one of those models that hasn't been worn, except maybe in some photo shoot by Nicole Ritchie ages ago when these glasses came out, so it wasn't even like to promote anything in particular. It was just for an editorial for a magazine. Um, these glasses, to me, They've been produced in extremely limited quantities and are crazy and are hard to pull off, are also extremely hard to find. This is something that to me should be worth more than the round Chanel sunglasses with the Paris Chanel Chanel Paris inscription on them. But you see how the world ticks. Uh, if a famous person X wears anything, the rest of the lemmings out there are just going to follow that person off a cliff. Go figure. That's the way the world works, but these definitely have way more design put into them and savoir-faire and they're more risky because, I mean, a lady, uh, for, this is a 2008, uh, spring, summer, 2008, or no, spring, summer, 2009, huh. Now I'd have to check into my archives. It's either 2009 or 2008, but it is definitely spring, summer, prêt à porter. Uh, a female model wore these on the catwalk, so this kind of Elvis Presley reminiscent look is very daring, they're oversized, so it's you're literally wearing a mask when you put them on. Uh, that's what, to me, these sort of statement pieces by Chanel, that's what makes it worthwhile for me to hunt down and, and to catch. Uh, these as well, I mean, they do have an extremely high iconic uh, quality to them and value because of all of the famous people that wore them, unfortunately. But to me, mostly because of absolutely fabulous. Now, one thing when a starlet wears them uh, and gets photographed by paparazzis, to me, that doesn't mean anything, really. But when a piece like this makes it into a movie or into a TV series, as iconic as absolutely fabulous, then there's a different price to it. Now, I know that also the round Chanel sunglasses with the Chanel Paris Paris Chanel inscription on them were worn by um, Jennifer Saunders in Absolutely Fabulous too, But, again, those shades were not produced in very small quantities. There's enough of them out there. Meaning, three, four, five thousand dollar price tags on those sunglasses is not justified in my personal opinion. But that's just my personal opinion. So there you have it, guys. I hope you liked uh, my review on the chain sunglasses with the frontal hanging chain. Let's put them on, shall we? Now we're gonna have to clean them again. So you could wear them hanging like this, or in the back of the head. You could even let them, you could close them and let them hang like this, or and this I told you in the other video, models had hats on and then put them on top of their hats and wore them like this. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. I hope you like this vintage Chanel treasure review. Uh, leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about them. And also let me know if you have some special Chanel vintage sunglasses pieces that you want to share with us because that would be great. I love to discover new models that I haven't seen before. And uh, share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Take care. And let me take the glove off to turn off the camera. See you all tomorrow. Love you. Bye. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So come on over, guys, and join the fun.